delegates, participants, guests, also those who are following us on TV and internet. Before we declare the 10th Assembly of the World Council of Churches open, I call upon the General Secretary of the World Council of Churches, Reverend Dr. Ola Fixit-Waite, for some preliminary actions. Your Holinesses, Your Eminences and Excellences, the Honorable the Minister of Culture, of Sports and Tourism of the Republic of Korea, Yoo Jin Rong, the Major of the Metropolitan City of Busan, Mr. Hu Nam Sik, and Reverend Dr. Kim Samwa, the moderator of the Korean Host Committee. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, thanks to God, we have all arrived in Busan, and we are glad to be here, meeting our Korean hosts and ready to begin the 10th Assembly of the World Council of Churches. Let me take this opportunity, Reverend Dr. Kim, to say a warm and wholeheartedly word of thanks to you and the Korean Host Committee, representing many churches in Korea and the National Council of Churches in Korea for the commitments and the contributions you have offered to this assembly. I would say more than any other host has offered to any assembly or the World Council of Churches. I also want to express my sincere gratitude to those representing the government of the Republic of Korea and the city of Busan for your presence and for your gracious support of the assembly for which we are greatly and deeply appreciating. So now, Reverend Dr. Kim, may I invite you to greet us and you have the floor. Chongyanan 환영합니다. 한국 사람들은 사랑과 환영의 표시로 하트 모양을 머리 위로 그리며 이렇게 서로 인사합니다. 사랑합니다. 여러분도 한번 따라 해 주시면 감사하겠습니다. 사랑합니다. 엄모, 사랑합니다. 엄모, 예, 감사합니다. 먼저 WCC 제 10차 총회가 이곳 한반도 부산에서 열릴 수 있도록 은혜를 주신 하나님께 감사를 드립니다. 짧은 역사를 가진 한국 교회 초청에 응답해 주신 WCC 전 세계 교회와 아시아 교회 그리고 한국 교회 위에 주 예수 그리스도의 크신 은혜와 축복이 함께 하시기를 바랍니다. 한국 교회와 대한민국은 짧은 역사 속에서도 세계적인 경제 성장과 민주주의의 아름다운 꽃을 피우고 정치, 교육, 
문화 등의 세계적인 발전을 가져오고 한국 교회도 세계에서 두 번째로 많이 선교사를 파송하는 선교의 안디옥 교회가 되었고 모든 사회 내 아픔에 참여하여 섬김과 봉사의 사명을 다하고 있습니다 그러나 60년 동안 분단된 남북의 아픔과 고통을 그대로 간직하고 있으며 핵의 위협으로 불안이 더욱 가중되고 있습니다 대한민국 뿐만 아니라 동북아는 세계 질서 재편의 중심에 서 있습니다 군사적, 경제적, 문화적 대결이 날로 증가되고 있습니다 광범위한 아시아 전체의 빈곤과 차별 그리고 수많은 억압을 우리는 보고 있습니다 이런 어려움은 아시아뿐 아니라 전 세계가 함께 겪고 있습니다 지금 세계와 인류는 전대 미문의 총체적 위기를 맞고 있습니다 세계 경제 정책을 좌지우지하는 세계 경제 포럼이 학계, 정치계, 경제계, 교육 관계자 천 명을 동원하여 지구 위협 2013년을 발표하였습니다 이 보고서는 충격적입니다 이 보고서는 인간과 지구가 향후 10년 동안 치명적인 위험을 맞을 수 있다고 진단했습니다 그리고 그 실패의 결과가 얼마나 심각할지 전혀 예상할 수 없다라고 발표를 했습니다 이렇듯 지금 전 세계는 위기의 시대, 절망의 시대, 희망이 없는 시대에 우리가 살아가고 있습니다 지금 우리가 겪고 있는 위기는 인간의 모든 힘과 방법으로는 해결할 수 없습니다 어떤 길도 제시하지 못하고 있습니다 WCC 제10차 총회 주제는 이 시대의 답입니다 생명의 하나님 우리를 정의와 평화로 인도하소서입니다 하나님이 해결하여 주십니다 이 모든 위기는 하나님을 떠나서 인간 중심의 삶에서 온 것입니다 예레미야 애가 3장 40절로 41절에 우리가 스스로 우리의 행위들을 조사하고 여호와께로 돌아가자 우리의 마음과 손을 아울러 하늘에 계신 하나님께 들자라고 말씀했습니다 이 절박한 때에 우리가 함께 모여 기도하고 회개하고 공동의 사명을 확인하고 함께 헌신하고자 하는 대한민국 부산총회는 하나님의 세계적 사명 앞에 서 있습니다 세계교회를 섬기는 세계교회 지도자 여러분 우리는 세계를 향하여 온 인류를 살려는 희망의 메시지를 전하는 예언자적 사명을 감당해야 할 것입니다 첫째 주 예수 그리스도만이 우리의 유일한 소망입니다 그가 길이요 진리요 생명이요 구원입니다 십자가의 복음만이 우리 모든 인류가 사는 길입니다 둘째 성령의 인도하심과 역사하심으로 교회가 교회답고 교회가 사도행전의 사명을 감당하며 선교와 봉사의 사명을 회복하여 참 그리스도인의 인격과 영성이 회복되어야 할 것입니다 셋째 하나님의 말씀 속에 길이 있습니다 오늘의 인류의 잘못된 정보의 홍수 속에 참 정보 진리의 거룩한 말씀의 정보를 잃어버렸습니다 기도 운동을 일으켜야 할 것입니다 역대하 7장 14절에 내 이름으로 일컫는 내 백성이 그들의 악한 길에서 떠나 스스로 낮추고 기도하여 내 얼굴을 찾으면 내가 하늘에서 듣고 그들의 죄를 사하고 그들의 땅을 고칠지라고 
말씀했습니다 세계교회 지도자 여러분 WCC 10차 총회는 온 인류를 살리는 축복과 희망의 메시지를 선포해야 하겠습니다 지난 날 아시아는 세계 문명의 발상지입니다 21세기가 시작되는 새로운 영적 문명을 아시아 대한민국 부산에서 열게 된 것을 성부와 성자와 성령님 성삼위 하나님께 감사드리며 이새 문명은 오직 복음 주 예수 그리스도와 하나님의 영광을 위해 부름받은 여러분으로 말미암아 이루어질 것을 확신합니다 샬롬 할렐루야 땡큐 소 마치 감사합니다 I then have the honor to call upon the mayor of the metropolitan city of Busan, Mr. Hurnam Sik. Uh, 오펠리아 오르데카 WCC 의장님, 울라프 픽스의 터베이트 총장님, 김사만 총회 준비위원회 대표 지도자 여러분, 함께하신 국내외 성도 여러분, 제10차 WCC 총회의 성대한 개막을 축하드리며 우리 부산을 찾아주신 모든 분들을 진심으로 환영합니다 세계 각국의 교계 지도자님들과 노벨 평화상 수상자이신 레이마 보위 아프리카 평화재단 대표님을 비롯한 귀한 손님들을 부산으로 모시게 되어 매우 영광스럽게 생각합니다 WCC는 세계 모든 교회의 일치와 공동 성교에 앞장서 왔습니다 인류가 세계대전으로 극심한 분열을 겪던 시기에 창립되어 신앙을 바탕으로 사회 평등과 정의를 실현하는 데 헌신해 왔습니다 여러분의 진실한 믿음과 오랜 실천에 깊은 경의를 표합니다 이번 부산 총회는 2006년 제9차 브라질 총회 이후 7년 만에 마련된 자리입니다 역대 최대 규모로 개최되는 뜻깊은 대회이기도 합니다 이번 총회가 21세기 인류가 당면하고 있는 여러 위기에 대한 보금적 대안을 제시하는 역사적인 총회가 되기를 바랍니다 우리 부산은 한국의 기독교를 전한 선교사들이 첫 발을 디딘 역사적인 도시입니다 특히 교육과 의료 성교의 역사가 깊은 도시입니다 부산은 동안 세계 유일한 유엔군 묘역이 자리하고 있는 자유와 평화의 상징이기도 합니다 오늘날에는 세계적인 관광 컨벤션 도시이자 동북아시아 물류 중심 도시로 나날이 발전하고 있습니다 이번 총회 기간 우리 부산에서 울려 퍼질 정의와 평화의 메시지가 세계 온 누리에 가득하길 바랍니다 부산 총회가 성공적으로 이어지기를 기원하며 우리 부산에 머무시는 동안 보람 있고 유익한 시간 보내시길 바랍니다 우리 부산을 찾아주신 모든 분들께 하나님의 축복과 은총이 늘 함께 하시기를 기원 드립니다 감사합니다 Thank you so much to both of you. 감사합니다. You're all gathered here.
to begin the 10th Assembly of the World Council of Churches. Delegates, delegated representatives and observers, advisors, and many other participants from all over the world. Let me share with you some figures that show who are present here at this assembly. We have 345 member churches of the World Council of Churches, 90% responding to the invitation to come to Busan. There are therefore 761 member church delegates, advisors to delegations, and outgoing members of the Central Committee from all the regions of the WCC. We have 465 representatives from ecumenical partners and other churches, observers and guests. We have more than 1,000 international assembly participants, including hundreds of young people. And we have more than 1,000 Korean host committee members, staff, volunteers, and day participants. We have 117 stewards, 195 staff, co-opted staff and interpreters. And let me take also this opportunity to particularly welcome those of you who are here representing other communities of faith around the world and particularly here from Korea today. It's a great honor for us that you also share this moment with us. The Assembly is the highest decision-making body of the WCC. The decisions of the Assembly will guide the future work of this fellowship and this organization. An Assembly is also the biggest and the most representative gathering of Christians in this world. And I'm especially grateful for the presence of the Roman Catholic Church representatives and representatives of many others that are not members of the WCC. And other ecumenical partners. A special warm welcome to all of you. And the opening play plenary is also the moment to welcome three new member churches among us since we were together in Porto Alegre in Brazil. They are the Independent Presbyterian Church of Brazil, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, and the Lao Evangelical Church. We welcome into this fellowship and we welcome all of you as we experience this time together. Let me now ask the WCC Central Committee moderator, Reverend Dr. Walter Altman, to officially open this assembly. Once more, Anyong Hasayo. Welcoming all of you, I wish you peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Our ecumenical journey has brought us from Amsterdam via Evanston, New Delhi, Uppsala, Nairobi, Vancouver, Canberra, Harare, and Porto Alegre to Busan for the 10th Assembly of the World Council of Churches. Let us pray for our wonderful Korean hosts and the churches in Korea. Let us pray for this divided country and let us pray for a successful assembly. In the words of one of the songs of our previous assembly in Porto Alegre, and therefore I pronounce the words in Portuguese. A tua paz, bendita irmanada com a justiça, abrace o mundo inteiro, tem compaixão. O teu poder sustente o testemunho do teu povo. Teu reino vem a nós, Kyrie eleison. Believing in the God of life, 
and trusting that God will hear our prayer, I declare the 10th Assembly of the World Council of Churches officially open. God of life, lead us to justice and peace. I call now on the WCC President for Latin America and the Caribbean, Reverend Dr. Ophelia Ortega Suarez. Thank you, Walter. Dear sisters and brothers, we have more than 700 young persons participating in this assembly. I am very happy to invite some of them to come to stage. Sonia Giovanni, Thomas Ken, Tabili Lolo, and Takape Balaywai. They represented the young generation among the delegates and the stewards of this assembly, the many young people who are making this assembly work to, through their service. We want to express our gratitude to all of them. Now, listen to the first of them, Sonia Giovanni from Cyprus. Hello everybody, my name is Sonia Giovanni, I am 21 years old and I am a third year law student at the University of Salford. I am a member of the Greek Orthodox Church and I am from Cyprus. Unfortunately, since 1974, my beautiful country of Cyprus has been divided from a Turkish invasion. I would like to ask this assembly to put pressure on the powers that will resolve the occupation of my country so that I can live free. I would also like to ask this meeting to help in any way possible the Christians of the Middle East who are under persecution. Welcome, Sonia. Thank you very much. I want to ask something to you. What do you hope will happen in this assembly to support the work and testimony of the churches in the Middle East? Thank you, Ophelia. I hope this assembly will affirm and support the churches and their life in the Middle East and in my homeland, Cyprus. There is no justification for the destruction of our and other communities' historical places of worship, in conflicts, or through occupying forces. This assembly must send a clear message of solidarity to all Christians in the Middle East, that the Christians of the world are with them, in practical terms, in advocacy for reconciliation, and peace with all powers involved, and in spiritual terms, through their prayer. Thank you, Stop. Thank you very much. My name is Thomas Kang, and I'm from the Evangelical Church of the Lutheran Confession in Brazil. I live in Porto Alegre, the host city of the Ninth Assembly of the World Council of Churches in 2006. I'm a son of Korean immigrants, and my father is from the region which is now North Korea, and my mother was born in, this, in South Korea. The country of my forefathers is divided because of political issues and economic issues. Latin America, and Brazil specifically, is also a divided country because of vivid injustice and inequality. My question is, what the WCC in a context like Latin America can do in order to address issues of inequality and injustice Thomas, welcome. <laughs> or divisions, the divide home country of your parents, and the inequality between people that are extremely rich and many, many poor people in your own country. How do you 
assisting the churches toward specific actions for justice and peace. To step forward, I, th I think the assembly can energize a group of people inside and outside the church. Sorry. Uh, I could not think of the name. <laughs> How do you envision this assembly assisting the churches to what a specific action for justice and peace? I see the assembly as a step forward. I, th I think the assembly can energize groups of people inside and outside the church to work for justice and reconciliation. I also think the assembly can help groups of people, of young people, in many parts of the world to, in, in, to work for justice and reconciliation as well. And I think the, the WCC assembly can also help to overcome barriers, cultural and confessional ones in order to help us to answer uh, God's call. Thank you so much, Thomas. Hi, my name is Tabile Lolo. I am from the Uniting Presbyterian Church in Southern Africa. I am based in South Africa in the Eastern Cape province. I am Kosa by origin. Most people in my area live on social grants and are affected by unemployment. I, w I would like to know how the assembly would address poverty in my area, country, and the world in general. Thank you. Tabili. Dear Tabili. Hello. Please help us to understand and respond faithfully to the cry of voices of young people in the midst of your contextual situation and difficulties. Thank you. Ophe Ophelia, I represent young people who mostly come from destitute communities and those that fight hard to come out of poverty and misery, struggling to find employment. I would therefore like the assembly to advocate with governments and actors in the economy to, for, for, for a strategy to eradicate poverty and ensure food security. Uh, this includes assisting young people as they do want to create employment and economic opportunities in their communities, in their countries, in the world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bula, my name is Takape. I'm from Fiji and I'm 25 years of age. I am a youth worker at my local church. My hobbies are reading, playing rugby, and traveling. I love traveling and making friends, new friends, wherever I go. The issue we face in the Pacific is the issue of climate change. In the Pacific, we are the least contributors to climate change, but, are the, but is the worst affected. My friends from Tuvalu and Kiribati might not have a home anymore due to climate change. Whatever we do to the environment affects others, including creatures. The message of justice from the Pacific is that we must respect our environment and be good guardians of it. Takape. In what ways can the churches help to increase the awareness of this urgent, demanding need for the care and sustainability of creation. Thank you, Ophelia. Have you ever wondered why it took God five days to create the heavens and the earth and only one day to create us? I believe that God knew how much oxygen we would all need in the whole lifetime. So the message from the Pacific to the assembly is this. We must learn to respect and be good guardians of the environment because our life is in it. It is about you and I, it is about justice, and it is about peace. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you very much, you, Sony, Billy.
for your clear statements and the way how to encourage, you encourage young people to raise their voices in this assembly. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Ophelia, Sonia, Tavili, Thomas. You show the way how young people can participate in our assembly and contribute to discussion, discernment, and decisions. Our plenary, uh, thematic plenaries, we will present greetings to the assembly of leaders of churches, ecumenical partners, and partners in interreligious dialogue. Let us listen now to the greetings of His All Holiness, the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew I. Beloved brothers and sisters, good morning. We greet you from the seat of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. We are with you in spirit and prayer as you gather parts of the world, calling upon the God of life to lead us to justice and peace. The commitment of the Ecumenical Patriarchate to the vision of the World Council of Churches has always been unwavering. Indeed, our dedication to the World Council of Churches is evident in our extensive participation in executive roles and responsibilities over many decades. More recently, we spoke at the Council's 60th anniversary and addressed the last Central Committee in Crete in 2012. The theme of this 10th General Assembly appropriately encompasses purpose, perspective and prayer. It comprises our goal in ecumenical activity, our attitude in ecumenical action, but also the divine blessing for ecumenical integrity. Let us, however, remember that our doctrine should inform our life. Our creed should conform to our liturgy, or in the language of the World Council of Churches, our faith should complement our order. Furthermore, we recall that justice and peace must accompany every program that we initiate, every aspect of our mission. In the words of the Orthodox Liturgy, we pray for the unity of all, particularly the peaceful reunification of the Korean Peninsula. We also pray for the peace of the whole world especially our brothers and sisters struggling for justice and peace in the Middle East. This is surely what informs our responsibility and accountability before critical problems of global importance, such as economy and ecology. There is no comfortable way of sitting on the cross. We cannot remain idle spectators in a world pervaded by social injustice and plagued by suffering and oppression. We humbly recognize our dependence on God's mercy for reconciliation and healing. The truth is that we are on a journey toward justice and peace. Ecumenism is rightly called a movement. It is this notion of pilgrimage that uniquely distinguishes the Christian way. Therefore, dear participants, we are obliged to work toward visible unity. We must remember that communion, kinonia, koinonia, is not just a sociological term describing the work that we do together. It is primarily a sacramental term defining our relationships as member churches. As such, the vision of kinonia should never be diminished or disregarded simply because it complicates our cooperation. 
as we consider the tasks before the assembly and beyond Busan, we have the following reflections to offer. First, we must never forget that our efforts are only instruments that serve the unity of the Church as the ultimate vision of the ecumenical movement and all its institutional expressions. Second, we welcome the initiative of the World Council of Churches to enlarge its membership. Then, we recognize the new roles of the WCC within the rapidly changing ecclesial and ecumenical landscape, but we expect the Council, especially the Faith and Order Commission, to continue its multilateral theological dialogues and assist churches in their pursuit of visible unity. And finally, we wish to see greater common witness in our world, the ecumenical formation of our younger generation, relationships with the Roman Catholic Church and other non-member churches, namely in everything that promotes Christian unity and interfaith dialogue. Beloved participants of the 10th Assembly, may your encounter in Busan be the source of renewal for our churches and our life together in faith, hope and love. May it pave the way for respect and compassion toward every human being so that all people may be welcomed and embraced as unique pieces of a sacred puzzle constituting the marvelous mystery of God's wonderful creation. May God bless this assembly and your deliberations. Your Eminence, Metropolitan Gennadius of Sassima, Please convey our sincere thanks to His Holiness for these substantive and forward-looking greetings, which certainly will inspire us throughout this assembly. I would like to call uh, now on His Eminence, uh, Cardinal Kurt Koch, to read the greetings of His Holiness, Pope Francis. Welcome. Your Holiness, Eminence, Excellencies, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I have the honor to convey to you all the message of the Holy Father, Pope Francis. To my brother, Cardinal Kurt Koch, President Pontifical Council for Promotion Christian Unity, on the occasion of the 10th General Assembly of the World Council of Churches, I ask you to convey my cordial greetings and good wishes to all gathered in Busan, and in a particular way to the General Secretary, Dr. Olaf fixit White, and the representatives of the Christian communities present. I assure you of my close pastoral interest in the deliberation of the Assembly, I reaffirm the commitment of the Catholic Church to continuing the long-standing cooperation with the World Council of Churches. The theme of the Assembly, God of Life, Lead Us to Justice and Peace, is above all a prayerful invocation of the Triune God who draws all creation to its fulfillment to the redemptive power of the cross of Jesus Christ and the outpouring of the manifold gifts of the Holy Spirit. Truly, Wherever the gift of life is cherished and justice and peace prevail, God's kingdom is present and his sovereign power is already at work. For this reason, I trust that the present assembly will help to consolidate the commitment of all Christ's followers to intensified prayer and cooperation in the service of the gospel and the integral good of our human family. 
the globally said world in which we live demands of us a common witness to the God-given dignity of every human being and the effective promotion of the cultural, social and legal conditions which enable individuals and communities to grow in freedom and which support the mission of the family as the fundamental building block of society, ensure a sound and integral education for the young and guarantee for all the untrammeled exercise of religious liberty. In fidelity to the gospel and in response to the urgent needs of the present time, we are called to reach out to those who find themselves in the existential peripheries of our societies and to show particular solidarity with the most vulnerable of our brothers and sisters, the poor, the disabled, the unborn and the sick, migrants and refugees, the elderly and the young who lack employment. Conscious that the soul of ecumenism remains authentic conversion, holiness and prayer, I pray that the General Assembly will contribute to a new impulse of vitality and vision on the part of all committed to the sacred cause of Christian unity, in fidelity to the Lord's will for his church, and in openness to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Upon all gathered in Busan, I invoke the abundant blessings of Almighty God, source of all life, and of every spiritual gifts. From the Vatican, 4th October 2013, Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, Pope Francis. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Eminence. Please share with His Holiness Pope Francis that his encouraging greetings were very well received by this assembly. We are indeed inspired by the many gestures and words of pastoral care given by the Pope. We deeply appreciate the partnership with the Roman Catholic Church. Now, we are going to give this stage to our wonderful Korean hosts and the presentation of the Korean churches. After the presentation, all participants are kindly invited to move immediately to the business plenary hall.
Council voted overwhelmingly in favor of armed intervention to protect the Korean Republic. It was the first police action sanctioned against an aggressor by the Parliament of Nations.
남과 북이 한데 엉켜 생주검이 웬일이야 같이 자란 동무도 쓰러지고 아비 아들 한자리에 쓰러지고 슬풀처럼 쓰러지고 낙엽처럼 흩어지네 날더러는 어째 살라 